Hi, this is Eric from Cafe Watercolor and welcome to another painting demo. So this painting has a lot of wet on wet work. Well, I'll try to go over them as much as possible. If you are not familiar how wet on wet works, you can check out my previous video about this specific topic. So I took the photo of this specific scenery when I drove by a Christmas tree farm. I love the depths of the scenery and I love all the little Christmas tree. They are very, very cute. They are a little bit repetitive, so I'm going to try to simplify them as much as possible. So I'm starting out by doing a value study. So the drawing part is actually very simple. I just did the roof of the house in the distance and I merged all of the trees that's in a single group into a single shape. I pre wet the paper from the sky all the way down to the horizon. I leave out the roof so that they can preserve as white. And while it is still wet, I come back in with some thicker mixtures to paint some distance trees and hills and stuff. And then I continue to wash all the way down to the foreground. So notice that the value of the background heel and the foreground grass, they are pretty similar because this is one continuous shape right now. So I'm separating this major shape of the sky and the ground. Now, while it is still wet, I do come back in to do some wet onto wet work. Since it is still kind of moist and damp, we can come back in with a thicker mixture and start to just put in some shapes, some soft shapes. Now, they will most likely spread out a little bit and they will fade off quite a bit. It is an overcast day, so all the shadow cast by the trees are going to be very, very soft. So they're more like occluded soft shadow than a real cast shadow. So when we're doing some soft shape within this wash to have a little bit of dark value is actually perfect for what we want later. So as I do wet on wet, the paper is starting to dry. So some of the edges become harder and which is good. I can start to define the trees and I come back in with even thicker mixture to have some darker shapes as well. So in this specific value study, I did it pretty much in one go. I wet the paper, I start to painting stuff wet onto wet, and then I start to add more mixtures, thicker mixtures as I paint. So before I did a single layer and then I'll wait for it to dry, and then I'll come back in with darker value. But this time around, I did it in one go. So it's very important to work with the watercolor to observe the stage of wetness it is in so that you can adjust your mixture accordingly and get the effects that you want. So now I paint my dark in wet onto wet as well so that you get some soft details within the tree because we merge a lot of the trees into a single shape. So within that shape, we need a little bit darker details here and there to give the illusion of separations and individual textures for the trees. So the value in this specific painting is actually quite simple. So the purpose of value study for me this time is really just trying to practice the wet on to wet process of this painting. I did a quick video before, one of the best way to practice wet on to wet and make sure consistency is to do value study because you only have one color to worry about. So now that we're moving on to our color version, again, I skipped the drawing part because we already showed that before. Again, very simple drawing. The point is to have a simple shape to work with. So before we start, I try to premix some of the color that I'm going to use. So specifically the color of the sky and the color of the grass. So the sky, even though it is very, very light, there's still a little bit of color in it. If you compare that to the rooftop, which is almost completely white, I want to give the sky a little bit of the tone there. So I mix mostly with cerulean blue, cobalt blue, and a little bit of lizard crimson to give that purple. So again, paint the one consistent wash and leave out the roof of the house. That way when we do it wet on wet on the background, it's not going to seep into the roof of the house. So again, I continue all the way down to the foreground grass. 
and I try to make it just a little bit warmer and a little bit darker as it comes to the foreground. It's actually not dark enough and it's not warm enough. So at the end, I'm going to do a glaze over. But now I mix a mixture for the background heel and the background trees. Now that looks pretty dark, but remember, especially in wet onto wet, when it dries, it's going to end up a lot lighter than what you see when you first put down the paint. And be gentle when you're doing this sort of distant trees in the fog. Use the tip of your brush and just gently drop the paint in. If you paint too hard, you might scrape off what you have underneath and that's not going to end up looking good. So as you can see, it's already starting to get lighter and we got this nice soft effect for the distant trees and distant hill. And that is watercolor at its best. And I'm going to try to continue this wash down just like how I did it in the value study. So I mix a darker green, a slightly darker green. And I warm it up just a little bit. So it's mostly cobalt turquoise with some burnt umber, yellow ochre, and things like that. Green is a tricky color, so try to keep it simple. Yet always try to mix your own green. Don't use straight out of the tube green. That usually doesn't look as natural. Again, I had another video talking about how to mix green. You can definitely go check that one out. So I just finished the wash all the way down to the foreground. And this is where the fun begins. So I tap some water on it, just create some textures. But then I really want to mix some thicker mixtures to do wet on wet on top of it, just like how I did it in a value study but I do need to be mindful of the color that I'm actually mixing. So there are some dry grass patch and stuff, so I want to mix a little bit warmer green. But again, the consistency of your mixture is very, very important. That's why we did a practice with value study, because if your mixture is too watery, you're going to wash off the paint underneath. So you're not going to get some darker soft shape, you're going to get lighter shape. And sometimes that might even result in cauliflower edges. Now, if that's the effect you're going for, then go ahead and do that. But if you don't want that, make sure your mixture is thicker. So generally speaking, if you want to do wet on too wet, the mixture on your brush needs to be drier than your paper. But once you get that, it's very, very fun just to drop in colors, let the color merge with each other. And like what Joseph Spookvich always said, let the watercolor paint itself. It's fun and relaxing and you alleviate your responsibility to the medium itself. So just have the right mixture and let it go. So the top part is pretty much dry, so I can start to paint in just a little bit more detail. So, so darker structure in the background, some background trees, whatever it is, just to add a little bit more sense of depth and sophistication. Now I try to paint the house itself, the wall of the house, but it's really far away and there's a lot of tree actually covering that, so I'm not going to do too much. I did switch to a firmer brush, a synthetic brush, just so that it's a little bit easier to paint. So now we have the sky and the ground, the grass. Now we're ready to plant some trees. If the scenery just has a couple house and the grass field, then we're pretty much done, but we need to plant some trees now. So the dark green, mostly cobalt turquoise and burnt umber. And if I need to go darker, I'll add a little bit of neutral tint or cobalt black, whichever you choose. And because the paper is mostly dry, especially the top part, you're going to see quite a bit of hard edges. So here is very, very important that you don't get carried away with all the details in the photos is next to impossible to try to paint loose yet try to paint all the details that you see so simplify them try to merge the shape as much as possible the trees on the left they are a little bit more separated so you can paint some individual trees over there but the right part where most of the tree are gathered we need to try to merge them as much as possible you can leave out a little bit of 
gaps here and there just so that it have a little bit sense of separations but try to connect them as much as you can the paper is at this damp stage right now so be really careful with the mixture you have it really needs to be thick enough if it is a little bit too watery it's going to start creating cauliflower edges but if you have the right mixture, it's going to have some lost and found edges, some very soft yet controlled shapes that's going to be perfect for this specific scenery. This painting I use actually quite a bit of cerulean blue and cobalt black. They are both granular colors, so you're going to see a little bit of this grain in the colors, which is great because those create some textures for the trees and the grass. So we got our basic tree shapes and now it's time to add a little bit more dark, try to define them just a little bit more. And because we just paint that big shape, that shape itself is still quite moist. So we can come back in with darker paint, starting to add some textures. I did some short strokes sideways, so that kind of hints the layering of the fir tree. All these little Christmas trees, they are kind of layered. So with that little hints of visual language, it can help to suggest all the details that you see. But again, because the paper is still quite moist, so the shapes we're painting now might fade back and almost disappear later. So this part of the process really requires us to pay attention and observe what is happening in the painting and start to add more paint if necessary. I also spread some water on top with my water bottle. They are very fine mist of water, so they're going to keep the painting moist for a little bit longer so I can work on it just a little bit more without worrying about it drying too fast. So if you're not really familiar with the wet onto wet process and you find your painting dry sooner than you want, spray a little bit of water on top, that usually helps. So I'm just adding some more dark as it fits. And you're starting to see the volume of the trees you're starting to see multiple trees gather into a single group and that's the power of visual language you just need a little bit of detail and suggestions and the viewer will connect the rest they will fill in the blank and this is more fun to look at anyways because the viewer requires a little bit more work on their end to get the image instead of if you just offer them every single little details there. They might be impressed with the amount of detail that's there, but it's a little bit less fun to look at to me. So I'm painting some dry grass in the foreground. And because they are foreground, they are going to be a little bit bigger. Just to push that distance a little bit more because the large landscape like these with less man-made structure, there's not a lot of perspective going on. So you need to suggest the depths with value and scale. So I am painting the foreground bushes. Notice that I switch the place. It was on the right in the photo, but I change it to the left. That's just to kind of make a balanced composition between the left and the right. If everything is on the right, it's a little bit too heavy on the right, and left is going to have this awkward empty space in the foreground. So move things around, change the shape if you need to. It is your painting, so make sure things work for your painting. So the foreground bush needs to be pretty dark, so I starting to add some cobalt black and more burnt umber into it, just to make it a little bit darker and thicker. So painting some more dark details here and there. And I erase some of the pencil lines over there in the back, just so that it looks a little bit cleaner. There's some white spot. I just went back in and painted out. So the foreground bushes, they are starting to get a little bit dry. They're still moist, 
but it's a good time that I can use palette knife or you can use your fingernail, whatever you prefer, and scratch out some details. Just a little bit of that, you can give it a hint of textures and dry grass and things like that. Don't scratch it too hard or you just want to scrape off a little bit of the paint on the top. You're not trying to scratch the paper itself. I'm using a smaller brush and filled in some tree trunks just to give it a little bit of more details there so that people see it, they will read it as trees, individual trees. Now you don't want to put tree trunks everywhere. It's just a little bit of suggestions. I really enjoy painting this one, even though there's not a lot of drama in this painting, but I really like the peacefulness of this scenery and just kind of have this very subtle anticipation of the holiday season, which I really enjoy. So now the painting is completely dry. I come back in a few hours later and I decided to do a glazing on especially the foreground, the bottom just to push a little bit more depth because the grass feel itself seems a little bit too light. If you squint your eyes, it is almost the same value as the sky, which I kind of need to change that. So I waited for everything to dry and then do a glaze. And I also warmed the grass up just a little bit so it's not too cold. So I added a little bit more handsome yellow when I mix my green there. But also I start to darken the trees a little bit more. And after it's dry, here's the final painting. I also go back in and paint some more dark details. Again, I enjoy painting this a lot, a lot of wet onto wet work. So I hope you enjoy that as well. If you're new here, please like and subscribe if you like my video. You can also go to my website at cafewatercolor.com, sign up to get my fast track watercolor PDF guide and some bonus videos. Thank you and I will see you guys next time.